let's consider what we read because the things that are in here, if we don't adhere uh, to these things, our present circumstances and conditions let us know that uh, Yahweh is going to recompense it to us. So let us be careful and mindful of the things that we deal with in our day-to-day -day life because truly Yahweh is going to have judgment one day and you know that all of us want to stand on the right hand of the majesty uh, uh, on high. But then, who's sufficient of these things? Mm -hmm. Truly, we get these things through the divine power uh, 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 of the Holy Spirit. But that's because of who you are. Mm -hmm. So let us never forget that. Ne never let us forget our relationship with the true and living God. Because truly, Yahweh is a consuming fire, and he will require it at our hands. Now, a lot of things is going on in the earth today, and we've been paying attention to uh, these things, and it has to do with our salvation. And when we get off into the prophets and read the things that the prophets had to say, we can put these things on the scene today and know that we haven't got long to stay here. But the thing of it is, is this, what are we going to do about it? Are we going uh, to live our lives uh, uh, in the motion of the world, or are we going to do the things that was required to us by the true and living God? We have to make up our mind about these things because Yahweh is not going to take our mess. Surely his hand is stretched out still, but we are living proof that Yahweh does not take any mess. Mm -hmm. But Brother Steve, read the oracles of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he may come in and sup with us and us with him, that we may continue to read out of this great legacy and consider what we read that we might do what's necessary to be saved. I'm going to read the oracles of the church beginning at 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sin. Amen. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man have received a gift even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua HaMashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim, for the anointed one's sake, have forgiven you. Be you, therefore, followers of Elohim as dear children, and walk in love as the anointed one also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness are covetousness, let it not be one's name among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving a thanks. Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Amen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church in Holy Convention. Uh, I'd like to start our class today. I'm going to do, I'm going to sing a song of deliverance to you today. And I'd like to... Uh, uh, start our class in St. Matthew 24, and we're going to pick that up at verse 1. I got this class title, The Beginning of Sorrows. Oh. 
the beginning of sorrows. We think that we having some pretty tough times now. Just wait. Yahweh has a way of making his people turn to him with all their heart and with all their soul. See, instead of that faking stuff that we like to do. Because, see, all of us think we somebody. There's not but one, and that's Yahweh. See, all the powers to be are ordained by him. And who are we that we should kick against these pricks? But see, man, Yahweh being an invisible God, man hasn't learned how to separate between himself and the spiritual things so he can see the things of the spirit. So what man has a tendency to do is man has a tendency to go in his little small mind and, and try to deal with things out of his uh, small mind. But see, in our, anything that we do, we must realize one thing. It's uh, 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 because of this new covenant that none of us can be satisfied with our own little personal successes. But where until we attain in knowledge and understanding, we must learn to return these things to those lost sheep who haven't found their way and to those who don't realize that they are lost and oppose themselves. So in all things, be careful to watch your words. They become action. Actions become habits. Habits become character and character becomes destiny. So let us be careful of these things because truly, we haven't got long, like the old folks used to say, swing low, sweet chariot, come in for to carry me home. I ain't got long, to steal away rather, I ain't got long to stay here. And we, when we read the scripture, we can very well see these things. But let me stop talking. And uh, 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 Brother Steve, uh, pick this up at uh, St. Matthew 24 and uh, verse one. Yes, sir. And Yahshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto them, See you not all these things? Mm -hmm. Yes, I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, this is what the Messiah said, right? Mm -hmm. Just looking at the temple, they said he won't. He said it won't be one stone left upon another that won't be stone down, thrown down, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's this wailing wall they they going up against? Huh? Mm -hmm. Aren't those stones stacked up on top of stones? Yep. Well, either it's a lie about that being the temple wall, the western wall of the temple, or the Messiah's a lie. Mm -hmm. And I have a tendency to believe when I read history that. The, the Messiah was not lying because truly what they considered to be the Temple Mount was the fort of Antonia that the Romans built for, their, for the, uh, the, the sixth garrison when they were in Jerusalem, the second garrison rather, when they was in Jerusalem. But go ahead and read, my brother. Yes, sir. <coughs> Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? He asked him three questions. Mm -hmm. When will these things be that the, that the bricks are going to be thrown down, right? And uh, what shall be the sign of your coming and what shall be the signs of the end of the world? Okay, these things are going to come at long intervals between each other. So the apostles wanted to know about these things, right? Mm -hmm. so go ahead and read, brother. Verse 4. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Why would you able to be able to be deceived? If the truth is running in the earth, how would you be able to be deceived? Because Satan is a master deceiver. And he has people that's doing what? They're serving him wide open and don't even know it. You can't tell people that they are serving the true and living God. I mean, you might get knocked upside your head. You know that. Especially when you're dealing with them Muslims, you might have to fight. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am the Messiah, and shall deceive me. Ain't they doing that in the Christian church? Come on. Jesus is Lord. Ain't you doing it? Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not. Okay, let's look at this. The Christians, we know this, and I, 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 tell, I say this all the time. The Christians banded together and fought wars all over Europe, Asia, and Africa, call them crusades. On with Christian soldiers marching off the war with the cross of Jesus going on before, right? 
conquering other people's land for gain and giving it to emperors and the Knights of Templar and all those people that had power back in those days, right? Then them same Christians in the 1400s, they came over here, well, 1500s. They came over here, act real nice to the Indians, then came back in force and murdered them off, right? And then these same Christians set up 13 colonies, which were 13 churches, didn't they? which is represented by the, uh, uh, by the pedestal that the statue that Goddess Liberty uh, uh, sits on, Liberty Pool, right? Mm -hmm. Then these same Christians went and got them some slaves, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we know what you did, don't you? Mm -hmm. You always say, whosoever touched you touched the apple of my eye. I'm going to recompense it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they're in big trouble, you know. Oh, yeah. Go on and read it, brother. Yes, sir. Yes. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24 and 25. Matthew chapter 24, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. Now, we're going to pick up this when we go into opening up the seals and blowing, uh, blowing the trumpets and pouring out the vials of wrath. So go ahead and read, brother. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. They're international conflicts, right? How do you think this beast is going to put all this thing together? Just say, well, look, y'all got to come together? When we get in Daniel, we find out there's going to be a great war to bring the Antichrist of the Middle East under the bonds of, the, of that covenant that, uh, that the Pope is going to uh, uh, confirm with many for one week. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name. Then shall they deliver you up. When these things come up on the earth, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name. Say, can't we see this on the wings of the wind now? Mm -hmm. Now we can see how the great tribulation is going to come up on our people, can't we? Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Hmm. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive me. And how they, what, what are they doing it for today? Filthy lucre's sake. Mm -hmm. They're doing it for money and prestige. They like to be, see, people like them titles. Mm -hmm. They like to walk around and say, there's Reverend so-and-so. Mm -hmm. There's the right Reverend so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Well, there's Bishop so-and-so, right? Mm -hmm. And none of them know what the deal is. Mm -hmm. But see, People like these titles because it makes them feel good. They carry a lot of prestige to them. So what we, and we even ourselves, we've gotten off into, uh, we like titles. Right. Title means something. Right. Title don't mean nothing. Right. Don't mean nothing. It's, the, it's what's in a name that counts. That's why uh, the scriptures say, choose a good name. Hmm. Because a good name is far better than rubies. Hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive me. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And why will iniquity abound? Because Yahweh himself sends them a spirit of strong delusion so that they will believe the lie that's going to be in the street. And we can very well see it today, can't we? Look how the church is being filled up on, on, on the first day of the week. And we know the Sabbath, Saturday is the Sabbath. And man going to tell me, well, I'm God. We changed it. Read, brother. Verse 13. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Mm -hmm. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The gospel will not be preached into the world uh, as a witness to the world and to the Messiah, to the whole world and to the Messiah. He sets up his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. When you therefore shall see the desol the abomination of desolation, spoken of Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in you deal flee into the mountain. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray you that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For there shall be great tri tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Mm -hmm. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, 
here is the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. They shall deceive the very elect. They shall deceive that 144,000, right? Mm -hmm. But the reason why they can't uh, 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 deceive that 144,000 because of it, the impossibility of deceiving that 144,000 because the Spirit has planted uh, their knowledge and understanding in them and they know it because they're accustomed to dealing with the Spirit. See, we get back in the Old Testament and we see how angels went and talked to folks in the body the shape of men, right? Amen. The Spirit still talks to people today. Nothing has changed. Amen. The Messiah said you shall not see him again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of, of Yahweh, right? Amen. But the prophet said he has given his angels charge over you to keep you in the way, and you shall not be moved unless you dash your foot against a stone. Amen. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 25. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's told them about the destruction of the temple, right? Yeah. And he, now he showed them the sign of his coming, for as lightning... Uh, cometh out of the east and shines when the heavens roll back. Mm -hmm. This shall be the signs of, uh, 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 of his coming, right? But what we're going to do, we're going to get in the scripture and we're going to see that the deceiver mm -hmm. is going to throw some things out and it's going to seem like heaven is going to open it, just open and close and then open and close and they ain't going to do that. Mm -hmm. You see? But we're going to, we, we're going to, we'll get to that. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 28. For what? two tri tribulations, uh, that the first tribulation that's going to take place, um, uh, the church is going to be raptured, and mm. then there's going to be a great tri tribulation, which is going to keep them from, from going through their rapture. And I want to know if, uh, what uh, uh, point of validity is there in that. We're going to read it. Huh? We're going to read it, my brother. There ain't no such thing as they're going to be raptured. Paul said, grow it out of this Jew first, right? Right? All of the things, Christ is king of the Jews, right? All the holy things that Yahweh was given to the children of Israel, right? Well, how's the church going to be raptured off first? See? They're going to be raptured. They're going to tell me they're going to be raptured off. And then uh, in the movement of their being caught up, a tribulation is going to come on the earth, and they're going to be snatched back down to the earth, huh? Hmm. Uh, them Christian don't pay nothing to, no attention to what them Christians say because they say cri uh, uh, Christian means what Christ like follow Christ right they don't do anything the brother says as a matter of fact they got uh, uh, you check the things from uh, 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 the 12 days of Christmas up to the beginning of their year and you can see that they don't do anything that the master says because everything they deal with in this month here up until the beginning of next month is tied up deeply in their traditions, their paganisms, and so forth and so on. So when the church gets to talk about they wrapped it off, let's see why they said they was going to uh, be wrapped it off. Let's go into uh, 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 Isaiah. Holy place there. We're going to come back to it. Isaiah chapter 14. And my brother picked this up at, uh, picked this up, uh, at verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 12. It says chapter 14 and verse 12. Let's see what Satan got on his mind. Isaiah chapter 14 and pick that up at verse 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground? <coughs> the Messiah say, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, didn't he? Go ahead. Yes, sir. But you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I've been thrown out of heaven, but I'm going to ascend into heaven. Ain't that what he's telling his folks? Yeah. We're going to heaven, right? Yeah. We're going up there and tear stuff up, right? 
I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, uh, which is the house of Israel. We're going to pick that up in Revelation 12. I will sit also upon the mount in the congregation in the sides of the north. If you read Psalm 48, it'll let you know that that's Jerusalem where he talked about sitting in the temple, right? And didn't the prophet say that the Pope was going to sit in that temple showing himself that he is God? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be just like the Most High, having everybody worshiping him, right? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Of course he didn't. So therefore he's saying this and passing that on to Satan. He's talking about his earthly throne, brother. See, uh, Satan is trying to be just like the Messiah. See, the Messiah uh, was promised that he was going to sit on the throne of David. So Satan is going to sit on the throne of this last king, you see, saying that he is uh, uh, the Messiah. You see, so uh, we can see how Satan said he's going to be just like God and what he's going to do is run things parallel. The only way that Satan can deceive you is out of this book here. See, Satan can't come to you with a whole lot of junk and a whole lot of wickedness and everything. You'll see that for right, right for what it is, right? But you can't be deceived into thinking you're doing the things right by doing what? By staying in this part of the book. And that's where he keeps you at, in this part of the book. That's the ending of the story. Which one of y'all? Now, it don't make sense to go spend $80, $90 for a good study Bible and then only read one-third of the book. That don't make no sense. Would you go buy a novel and do that with the novel? If you bought a novel and you start, if it's got 100 chapters and you start at chapter 25, I mean 75, there's no way between here and hell you'll know what happened in the beginning. So people can tell you anything to you. Well, that's the same thing that happened with the Christians. They tell folks anything, and folks say, you know what? That's right. That's right. Never do any research. See, what we like is this. We like that grapevine-type knowledge. See, we like the stuff that people wrote recently, brothers that came up lately, instead of going back here. The prophets had it all. All we have to do is just read this book here. But see, we don't like to do that because we think that God done hid himself. Oh, no, he's right there. He's right there. When you wake up in the morning, he's right there. See? All during your day, he's right there. He's on your right hand, and you shall not be moved. See? We move our creator out of the way when we do what? When we get off in the I think, I feel, I, I, I. That's what moves him out of the way. Because it ain't got nothing to do with I. It got to do with him. Uh, so we see Satan said he was going to ascend into heaven. That's why his folks talking about they going up to heaven because Satan has told them that lie and we're going to find out as we read through here ain't nobody going to heaven, not even the Billy Goat. Yeah, yeah go ahead with your question. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Charismatics, brother. Mm -hmm. Charismatics. And the doctrine that we learn here in the South, truly, we got from the charismatics. All of that speaking in tongues and all that other junk we go through, we got that from the charismatics. Uh, they think that people don't understand that tongues are various languages. That's all. Every nation on the earth almost speak a, a different tongue. But see, they try to say, well, when a man speaks in an unknown tongue, they speak to God. Right, and let him go in his closet and speak to God, because I, I don't know what he say. I can't say amen to what he say. I very, just do speak Ebonics. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back into St. Matthew 24 and pick that up, my brother, and finish up. Well, he is, but what, who they believe in, he's just as sweet as he want to be. He done told you you don't have to do nothing God say do. All you got to do is believe that I'm the son of God. Do anything you want to do and just believe. And if on your deathbed, all you got to do, you can be the worst sinner in the world. 
And on your deathbed, all you got to do is make a deathbed confession, and you're going to be whisked off in the ever, never, never land. Right. Then you won't be judged by your works and your words, will you? Then he would have made his father lie with him. Okay. Uh, let's go back to uh, St. Matthew 24 and uh, pick this up, my brother, at, uh, at verse uh, 29. Uh, 20. Pick it up at verse 29, yeah. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the moon be darkened, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Mm -hmm. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. Mm -hmm. So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Amen. Yes, I say unto you. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour know of no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. We don't know the hour or the day, but we know just about what time of year it's going to be. Go ahead, brother. Verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. As the days of Noah were, what was Noah doing? Noah and his family was preparing for this coming, right? And as the days of Noah were, so also shall uh, be the, uh, the coming of the Son of Man. Noah was preparing, we are preparing, right? Once we get prepared and the Holy Ghost has moved out of the way, the earth got some big problems. It's the, it's the spirit that's withholding all these things until Yahweh's word be manifest syllable by syllable. Why? Because Yahweh's word must be fulfilled. We must fulfill the book. Amen. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Mm. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. When the Son of Man comes, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 42. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Adonai does come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. Right, we can be waiting for the Son of Man to come. It's supposed to be better things to come for you today. This is why you got to keep yourself ready. We can't plan and say, well, by that time I'll be ready. Uh-uh, you need to be ready today. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. <coughs> Verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord have made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Yes, I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Amen. But it is that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he look not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrite. <laughs> there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now the servant knew that his Lord was coming, right? But his servant decided he wanted to be an apostate Hebrew Israelite, all right? Oh, so what did he say? The Lord is going to come in a day when you don't even look for him. Now, you had this knowledge before, right? right? What happened? What happened? You slipped back in the dark. Right. Never left the dark. And then they're going to say, well, Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Right. 
Didn't we pass out all these pamphlets that was printed out in your name? Right. Didn't we do all of these things in your name? But your slate ain't clean. So what would he say? Get away from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Go ahead and read me, brother. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Right, they filled up the lamps, but they didn't take no extra oil with them. They said, I got enough. I got enough right here. I'm going to light my lamp, right? Okay, go ahead, brother. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Took a can of oil with them, right? They said, well, wait a minute. The Lord may delay, de delay his, his coming, so we better take some more oil, because this oil ain't going to last but a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Now oil is a symbol of the Holy Ghost, right? Mm -hmm. So these foolish said to the wise, Look here, give us of your spirit, mm -hmm. Because our spirit then went out because we misused it. We thought we were somebody. We thought we was more than Yahweh put us on the earth to be. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 9. But the wise answer said, Not so. Least there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Go prepare yourself. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And while they went to prepare themselves, while they went to ask Yahweh for his forgiveness, and so forth and so on, what? The bridegroom came while they was over there tarrying, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Adonai, Adonai, open to us. But he answered and said, Yes, I say unto you, I know you not. I don't know you. I don't know you. See, you got out from under this umbrella here. I don't know you. The door is shut. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Right, he called his own servants. He said, come here, servant. I'm going to give you a gift. Yeah. Right? I'm going to give you a gift now. I want you to maintain this gift while I'm gone. Go ahead, bro. Verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents. He gave one five talents, right? Super smart. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. To another two. He wasn't so smart, but he got two talents. And to another one. Mm -hmm. To every man according to his several abilities, and straightway took his journey. To everyone according to what? To the way that he's been trained from a child. And the way that the Spirit is leading him, leading him in the doing thing with that gift today, right? For the edifying of the body of itself in love, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Mm -hmm. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. Mm -hmm. But he that re had received one went and dig in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Man, I'm the least of the brothers. So I'm going to go, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and hide this money here to make sure that he get his stuff back that he gave me. Mm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned up with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Amen. His Lord said unto him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter you into the joy of your Lord. Now, 
check this congregation here out. Do y'all know that we started congregation in other cities? Not congregation that we're in control of, but we started congregation in other cities. You know why? The talent, we had more than one talent that was, that was given, so we can do this. We can anoint a brother with oil and tell him, say, receive you the Holy Ghost, go and do your work. Amen. And then turn that brother loose and let him go do what the Spirit leads him to do. So that way, you won't have to, it, it's just like this brother here. This brother here goes up in Charlotte, he got transferred on his job, and he sets up a congregation up there in Charlotte. And you know what I do when he call me? Fine. If he don't call me, fine. You know why? That's between him and his spirit. And see, you can end up being busybodies in other men's matters and find out that you boxing with your creator. See, that's why I don't go to the mother camp. See, the mother brothers get all on TV and man, they lambast us, man, and drag us all through the mud, right? But then that day is coming too. You see, the best thing that we can do is this. Keep on doing what you got to do because we know we're going to be talked about. We know we're going to be spit upon. A lot of us are going to be cast in prison. Go ahead and read, brother. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 25, verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. <coughs> Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter you into the joy of your Lord. Amen. Then he which had received the <coughs> one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you that you are a hard man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not straw. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth. Look, there you have, that is yours. Right, I ain't giving my talent to nobody. See, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it back to the Lord. He gave it to me. So when he come, it's going to be fresh and ready for him, polished and everything, just like he gave it to me. <laughs> right. Go ahead, brother. Verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and slewful servant, you knew that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. You ought therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with interest. Mm -hmm. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which have ten talents. Mm -hmm. For unto everyone that have shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen, amen. Because there's no increase to the body. There's only trouble that is brought to the body. Uh, uh, uh. Let's go into Daniel 7 and pick some of these things the Messiah was talking about up in Daniel 7 and pick that up at verse 1, my brother. Daniel 7 and verse 1. You know, where we just read from Elder, uh, most Christians utilize, uh, use 15 through through 29 or 30 to talk about uh, prosperity and financial investment. Of course they do. Of course they do. Prosperity and financial investments, right? Brother, let me tell you something. I have invested my whole life, and it has, not, it has nothing to do with natural prosperity and investment. What I invested in profit, rather. What I invested my whole, natural profit. What I've invested my whole life in is you. You see. 24-7, 365, when I'm not asleep, my mind is on somebody in this congregation. Or what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to put forth to this congregation. My mind has stayed on this simply because I know the talent that I've been given. And when my, when my, when my Messiah come, I want him to say, you stand on my right hand. You did a good job. Yes, you wasn't right. You wasn't worth a quarter, but you did a good job. <laughs> uh, Daniel 7, and pick this up, my brother, at verse 6. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Daniel spoke and said, I saw my vision by night. And behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings there were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, 
and may stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Hold up for a minute, brother. Uh, whoever moved my uh, my easel out of here, I'd appreciate it very much to bring it back. Now, somebody took it from out here because it was sitting right there. And we need that, I need that easel to put that, uh, uh, hold on for a minute, bro. See, niggas be bothering stuff and don't want to put stuff back. See, that pisses me off when a nigga moves something. You got it sitting where you want it at, and the brother come and say, uh, sister come and say, I need this, and then when you look for it, it's on the other side of town. <laughs> Steve, uh, go ahead. Yes, sir. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the psalm of the matter. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. Four angels strove upon the great sea, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Four empires came out, and each one they call them beasts, right? Mm -hmm. Because of their character right. and their nature. Four beasts came up from the sea, and all of them was different from the other ones, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings there were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and may stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Now, when we get back into the earlier chapters of Daniel and read about Nebuchadnezzar, we know that this was the Shemite kingdom that came up on the earth in 606 B.C., and Nebuchadnezzar was the first head, right? Right here with the seven heads. Nebuchadnezzar was the first head of the Babylonian Empire, right? Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 5. <laughs> and behold, another beast, a serpent like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said, Thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Now, we know that this is when the media, I mean, when the, uh, 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 the Medio, yeah, the Medio Persian Empire came up on with the Russians and the Iranians in 539 BC, and they took over the Babylonian Empire, right? right? But they had one head, right? Mm -hmm. So now we got two heads, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Very sick. After this, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads. And dominion was given to it. Now, this is when the Greeks came through in, in 333. Some people say 332. Some people say 335. So we'll put it at 333, which the history book says. Uh, Alexander the Great came through in 333, and he overthrew the Medio Persian Empire. And But what did he take over? The Babylonian Empire. And Alexander never did rule the whole earth, but he died when he met his Waterloo. His uh, uh, his kingdom was divided up, up, up among the Seleucids of Syria. I think they on the mm -hmm. Yeah, the Seleucids of Syria. Cassander uh, ruled from Russia. Luchamanus ruled from Macedonia, from Rome, and Europe rather. And uh, 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 eventually, eventually the Ptolemies, the Ptolemies was the one that ruled from Egypt. A lot of us like to say, well, Cleopatra was black. No, she wasn't. Cleopatra was the daughter of Ptolemy, and Ptolemy was a Greek. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, Just sir. because she ruled from Egypt, people say, well, she was black. Because she ruled a black land, that's because they don't know history. That's that grapevine stuff, that word of mouth stuff that we get and get all messed up. I like to call it niggerism. Right. Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. Daniel chapter 7, verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. And, okay, now this fourth beast, we, we know that this is the Roman Empire that came up on our, our people in 63 B.C., right? But it had one head. See? When the first got it started, Octavian was the first head. But then if they filtered down, once they made it into a union type thing, then we had other heads to come up between this. But we know uh, after that, but we know who this is here. This is the Holy Roman Empire that came up on, uh, that, that, that came up on the earth in 63 B.C., right? Okay, go ahead and read, bro. Verse 8. 
Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there was three of the first horns plucked up by the root. Now, this other little horn, the first horn that we read about was political Babylon. The second horn, this little horn here that we're reading about, this is the ecclesiastical Babylon, and what they're getting off into is a merger of church and state. Because when Rome fell in 476 A.D., uh, uh, the Hurley, uh, uh in the Ten Horns here, the Holy Roman Empire, and Emperor Justini, the fourth emperor, allied with Pope St. Leo, and they plucked those horns up by the root. And since those, uh, since uh, uh, that happened, Charlemagne, um, uh, 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 Rule, Otto the Great, Charles V, Mussolini, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, and Mussolini, and the tenth one is on the scene today. A lot of people like to, uh, like want to believe that it's Prince Philip. Other people want to breathe that it's Juan Carlos uh, 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 of Spain. I have no foggiest idea who he's going to be. You see, but these are the people that's prominent in the news because of their uh, their power that will be the tenth king. But I know one, I know this much: whoever he is, the Messiah is going to kill him when he comes. <laughs> now I do know that. Yeah. Now, go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> Last part, verse eight. The line. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and to have his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So what was he sitting on? He was sitting on the chariot of Israel that Elijah saw, wasn't he? Go ahead, brother. Verse 10, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were mm -hmm. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spoke. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. For three months, right? Remember it told us that the rulers are going to be put in jail, right? Mm -hmm. And after many days, they're going to be visited, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. <coughs> I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And that was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Hold up, brother. Okay, read that verse for me again, please. Verse 14. And that was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Now, is he going to be given a kingdom in heaven? Ain't but one kingdom in heaven. So he can't be given a kingdom. His kingdom would be given to earth. He was promised, David was promised, of the fruit of your loins would I sit upon your throne. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about the master sitting on David's throne, but where was David's throne at? It was he on the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the thing. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Mm -hmm. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, 
even forever and ever. They didn't say nobody was going to be people talking about, it's going to come a time when millions of people are going to be missing off the earth. Like, 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 uh, the Messiah is going to show up and he's so scared to come to this bad boy here, he's going to suck his folks up into the air and they gone on off to Never Never Land someplace. That's not what it said. Verse 18 said, but the saints of the Most High shall do what? Take, Take the kingdom. That means you have to go to war. Right. You ain't going to go up in heaven and do no war. <laughs> Satan tried that. Right. <laughs> go ahead and read, bro. Verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of bread, which devoured, broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet, and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellow. Daniel didn't want to know about the other beasts because Daniel lived in the Babylonian Empire and the Medio persian Empire, right? So he knew that this thing wasn't going to happen, to happen in the Greek Empire. He knew it was going to happen in the Fourth Empire. He said, tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that Fourth Empire. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 21. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. I beheld the same horn, the Roman Catholic Church, the Christian Church, made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Look at us. Look at us. What marvelous temple do we have set up any place? Huh? Somebody's making war with us. Here we are in the country. We the tail in, the, in, 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 the, in a strange land and can't even go home. Right. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Okay. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hands unto three and one half years. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, right? He's going to speak things that the Most High haven't even said. In other words, you don't have to keep God's law. I'm a direct successor of St. Peter, uh, right? And uh, uh, it said that he's going to wear out the saints of the Most High, man. Look how our people have uh, been sucked in by all these, 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 these whorehouses all over the earth that they call churches. Huh? So he is wearing out the saints of the Most High, and they changed the beginning of the year, didn't they? Didn't he? They changed time, and then they tell us, well, look, you don't have to keep God's law. All you got to do is keep Christmas and Easter and go to church on Sunday. Keep Valentine's Day, right. see, and all that little other stuff, see. So they did uh, 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 change times and laws, but we're going to be given into his hand until how, how, how long? For three and a half years. That's during the Great Tribulation period. He can't talk about now. He's got to be talking about the Great Tribulation period. So when folks get to talking about his two Tribulation period, I read one. Go ahead, brother. <coughs> uh, Paul talks about in Corinthians that um, Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. Um, therefore, his ministers have transformed themselves into ministers of uh, righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I look at um, Jack Van Empey and um, um, what's his name, John Hagee, mm -hmm. who combined together mm -hmm. to come out with two mm -hmm. series and videos, mm -hmm. uh, and they quote from Daniel uh, about the very same things that we're talking about, but it's in the exact reverse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, of course. And I'll tell you another thing, too. Jack Van Imp has said 20 different times he had to change his story mm -hmm. about the three horns that's being plucked up by the root. Mm -hmm. See? First, he named some countries that was taken uh, because of some things that was taking place in the formation of this Holy Roman Empire uh, uh, in these times. He said, these horns here are going to be plucked up by the root. 90, 90 members. Mm -hmm. You see? But the thing of it is, is this. He got 23 satellite hookup, 23 station satellite hookup, right? And what happens is this. Folks sending that money in, brother, they don't give a damn whether he right or whether he wrong. They supporting that ministry. See, that's what it is, man. The people, the people don't know nothing. Right. And what makes them think that here's a man that's going to get, I'll show you how stupid this is, how stupid a man is. 
Messiah, the apostles asked the, uh, uh, the Messiah, say, uh, Adonai, teach us to pray. He said, when you pray, say, Our Father, which are in heaven, right? He said, anything that you ask the Father in my name, I will do it, right? But you got to ask the Father, right? When Jack Van Amp played, pray, what does he do? He said, y'all pray this prayer of faith with me. Look right in the camera and say, oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. Don't he? Right. And then when he get through, he say, in your holy name. Mm. Right. How stupid can that be? Right. He, right. he just violated what the Messiah told him to do, didn't he? Yeah. The Messiah told him to pray to his father, not to him. Right. Go ahead and read. Uh, uh, Go ahead. Too much to do with it. Talking about, but we were brought over here on a boat called Jesus. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, I heard it. I heard it, but I, I, I don't know about that. You might be right. You might be right. If y'all, what y'all can do, y'all can dig up that information and bring it, and we'll print it, put it out front out there. But as far as what the boat's name was. I never did consider what the boat's name was. What I considered was who they was bringing over his slaves. You know, the boats went back and picked up another load. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's about that. And uh, what they say, here comes Jesus for y'all. <laughs> I don't know, brother. It, it, it might be true. Uh, it might be true. Taking y'all captive. Right. But go ahead and finish up, please. Daniel chapter 7, verse 26. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under, ho under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, mm. whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness under the whole heaven, right? shall be given to who? Israel. The people of the saints of the Most High and the time is going to come that you're going to possess that kingdom. He told you in verse 18 you're going to take it. Mm. Now, uh, 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 from the second chapter of Daniel, we understand that 2,520 years were passed over the Babylonian or Shemite Empire. This began when the Russians and Iranian sons of Yaphet uh, surplanted Shem in 539 B.C. Subsequently, the Greeks under Alexander the Great in 333 BCE, and, uh, and the Romans began their reign in 63 BCE uh, to 40, 476 ACE when Rome fell and divided. Today, we are captives through this fragmented empire of Satan's uh, cursed children. Uh, uh, uh. Now, why is this these things, these people set out to, uh, what did these people set out to do? To do? Let's go ahead in chapter 8, brother, and pick that up to verse 15. Now, he went through this whole thing of showing him a ram, the he goat, and all of this stuff. But when you read all of that, I don't want to take up the time, but when you read all of that, you're going to find out that these things refer to those four kingdoms that came up on the earth. That's all it was referring to. He showed it to him one way, then he turned around and showed it to, to him another way, and then he turned around and explained it so it would be we could make no mistake about what's going on in these latter days. See, y'all, people say King James wrote this book. Well, I'm sure glad he did. I'm sure glad he did because it's telling me what King James told me, a slave, is what's going to have to take place upon this earth. Go ahead and read, brother. Chapter 8 and pick this up at verse, uh, verse uh, what I said, 8 and 15? 8 and 15. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, that stood before me as the appearance of a man. Mm-hmm. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Eula, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Hmm. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. For at the time of the end shall be the vision, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 18. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. But he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, 
I will make you know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time upon it, the end shall be. Amen. The ram which you saw having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. Mm. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Mm -hmm. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand out of the up out of the nation, but not in his power. Not, not, not in Alexander the Great's power. They're going to stand up in their own power, right? Mm -hmm. Divide the earth up in the quarters, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fear of countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Now we got Ecclesiastes, this last pope coming up on the scene. Go ahead, brother. Verse 24. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. That's you. That's you. We can look for it. We can look for destruction. Look at our people in the streets, man. Black folks ain't talking about nothing and getting off, ain't got nothing and getting off in everything, ain't they? Oh, our soul to the company store, don't. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. contradiction of what the scripture says it, uh, it really highlights why it's so important for the teachers of Yahweh's word to be accurate in their discernment of what the scripture says mm -hmm. because most of the flock tend to not listen or read the scripture themselves they follow what the man has to say mm -hmm. that's why we had the David Koresh's and the Jim Jones mm -hmm. And here's a brother who calls himself Yahweh, son of Yahweh, mm. and has one of the biggest congregation of Israelites that you can run into. So the people are very weak for the most part and tend not to do the study that they need to do. They like the charismatics of the teachers mm -hmm. rather than reading what the word has to say. Mm -hmm. This is why we have to learn how to watch our words. This is why we have to learn how to uh, find out how we should walk and walk therein without any semblance of evil. Amen. Because when people look around and see some resemblance of evil, the first thing they're going to do is back up and start chit-chatting. And once they start chit-chatting, chatting, it'll flow out into a viper. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to do. You have to let those things fester, right. let them fester, and let them make themselves manifest. Then once left make itself manifest, then what you have to do is go ahead and do what you got to do. If it end up that you... You have to get out the door, then you get out the door. Amen. It's just that simple. If it end up, you have to get rid of half the folks in the congregation, then you get rid of half the folks in the congregation. Whatever it takes. Amen. Because we got a job to do, and that job is not going to be thwarted. Uh, uh, like I keep telling y'all, I had an agenda when I came here. Mm -hmm. And we right on the money with that agenda. Right on time with it. We ain't behind none. Seeing that I got some sisters from coming here and took up a little slack. Uh, 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 we aren't behind any in our agenda. But see, sometimes we can have good ideas that we can project a year from now. See? So I take that idea and I put it in the fire cabinet because it ain't ready for it yet, you see? And this is what causes a lot of problems. Sometimes you get to the position of where you're not ready to do certain things and other folks want to do certain things. So what you have to do is this. You have to part your ways. That you go do what you got to do because I got a schedule. I got to do what I got to do. Amen. I got to be I got to be at this point here, at this time right here. Well, no, I think we should win ain't what the Spirit told me. Now, I don't know what it told you. You go, you follow your Spirit. I'm going to follow mine. Uh, 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 you finished that, didn't you, Steve? Um, at verse 25? Uh, uh, I thought you could say that. Uh, you, 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 you could have stopped it uh, <coughs> at, at verse 25. That was good enough. Oh, I'm now, <coughs> it said that they was going to destroy the mighty and the holy people. Why destroy our people trying to make the almighty El break his covenant with Israel? That's why he wants to destroy us, to keep, us from, keep uh, the almighty from making his covenant are keeping his covenant with Israel. But let's go and read some of this covenant. Let's go into Isaiah chapter 32 and pick that up at verse 1 through chapter 34 and verse 17. Chapter 32 and verse 1 through chapter 34 and verse 17. <coughs> See, 
y'all don't get no jump when y'all come over here. Y'all get what we read. The scripture says prove all things. When you see me up here ranting and raving and ain't proving all things, I need to sit down. See, y'all need to get on up and walk right on out the door. So that brother talking out his nose today, he ain't talking in the spirit. And I'll understand it. Uh -uh. Isaiah chapter 32, and pick that up at verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. Amen. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hark. Amen. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak plain. Praise God. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the curl said to be bountiful. Verse 13. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all houses of joy in the joyous city. Because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for dens forever, a jaw of wild asses, a pastor of flocks, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Mm -hmm. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. In other words, our land is going to be in captivity to the, to, to the nations that's in our land until what? Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Because we, that Spirit has to be poured upon us before we can go to war. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 16. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. He's going to purge out. All of the captivity is going to leave here because people are going to be getting out of here going back to their own land, right? But two-thirds of our people is going to be cut off and die. Two-thirds of our people. That means it might it's possible that it's one in three of us in this congregation here that's going to make it. What we have to do, look at your slate. Amen. Look at your slate and see how your slate runs along with the slate uh, of NCCI. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 17. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Praise God. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. When it shall hail coming down on the forest, and the city shall be low in a low place. Blessed are you that sow beside all waters, that send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. Woe to you that spoileth, and you were not spoiled, and dealt treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with you. Hmm. When you shall cease to spoil, you shall be spoiled. And when, you, and when you shall make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with you. I read this to a brother that had uh, uh, used to come to our congregation. I read this to him. I said, now remember, this is coming. This came out of the mouth of Yahweh. This is coming. Now you can look for it because you dealt treacherously with the wife of your youth. Amen. Go ahead and read. But we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna fuss. What we're gonna do is this. We're gonna pack up and we're gonna move. We ain't gonna ask you to move. Right. We're gonna move. Amen. Right. Yeah. right. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2. And when we move, Yahweh fished to where they didn't even know we had gone. Mm. Didn't even know we had moved. We had took down the tent and never got all of our stuff and loaded up on the truck and moved over to another place and was set up in another place before they realized we were gone. Mm. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2. O Yahweh, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. Praise Yahweh. At the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of yourself, the nations were scattered. And your spar shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar. As the running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. Yahweh is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Judah with judgment and righteousness. Praise Yah. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without, 
the ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. Right, because when they say peace, 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 each time they say peace, sudden destruction is going to come upon them like a woman in travail, and they ain't going to be able to put it on. Mm -hmm. See? How can a nation make peace when Israel is in turmoil? Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. The highway lie waste. The wayfaring man ceases. He has broken the covenant. He have despised the city. He regard of no man. Hmm. The earth mourneth and languishes. Lebanon is a shame and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruit. Now will I rise, says Yahweh. Now will I be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. Praise you. you shall conceive chaff, you shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. Hmm. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime. As thorns cut up shall they be burned in the fire. And we're going to read that. He, he told Isaiah this, right? And then when we get into this thing, we're going to find out that the people's flesh is going to consume away uh, 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 while they stand up on their feet. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 13. Hear, you that are for all what I have done, and you that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Judah are afraid. Filthiness have surprised the hypocrites. Hmm. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burning? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. Amen. He that despises the gain of oppression, of oppression, that shaketh his hand from holding a bribe, that stoppeth his ear, ear excuse me, from hearing a blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. Hmm. He that he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rock. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be pure. Amen. Your eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. He didn't say you're going to behold heaven. He right. said you're going to behold the land that is very far off, right? Amen. Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 18. Your heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the tower? You shall not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech that, then that you can perceive, of a stammering tongue that you cannot understand. Right, because you're going to turn to the whole earth one language, right? One pure language. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20. Look upon Zion, the city of our salinity. Your eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. Praise Yah. But there, the glorious Yahweh will be unto us a, plate of, a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ships pass thereby. Amen. For Yahweh is our judge, Yahweh is our lawgiver, Yahweh is our king, he will save us. Your tacklings are loose. They could not well strengthen their mass. Hmm. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spar about it. The lame takes the prey. Mm -hmm. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Come near, you nations, to hear. And hearken, you people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Amen. Their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a fallen fig from the fig tree. Hmm. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia and upon the people of my curse to judge. Right, they shouldn't have been over there in our land talking about they the Jews. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Amen. Verse 6. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh have a sacrifice in Basra, 
and a great slaughter in the land of Edomia. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. Hmm. For it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Yehudah. For the controversy of Zion. None of the rulers ever rule the whole earth until they conquer Zion. And everybody that come up and conquer Yahweh's holy mountain, he got something for them. He got something stored up for his people, regardless to how long ago it, it was or when it shall be. He got something stored up for him. Why? Because this is his holy habitation. And here is a fleshly man coming up with anger like Antiochus Epiphanes. Come up and sacrifice a female sow on Yahweh's altar. Don't you think Yahweh's going to recompense that to his people? Yeah. Yeah. I can't understand if, if those people believe that they're Jews over in Israel, then who they who do they believe the Edomia is? Hmm. I don't know, bro. They don't read that song. They don't talk to me. <laughs> Just like I was. They don't, uh, they don't talk to me. The when they turn around and talk, when they 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 uh when they sent that when they brought the Falashi out of Ethiopia, and the guy come talking about they sent one of their rabbis down there and talking about they're the tribe the lost tribe of Dan. I sent the Israeli consulate a letter mm. and told him that's preposterous. Mm -hmm. Read Second Kings 16 and 17. Dan was colonized all over Europe and Asia in 721 B.C. by Shalmaneser. So what the hell is up with this? <laughs> Read Josephus. But you know what that got me, don't you? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, go ahead and read. But you know, Elder, um, most of the people that I met, you know, I'll tell you, I met quite a few people from the uh, Middle East and Africa. They know Esau is not a, a Hebrew Israelite. Of course. All the people over in the Eastern Hemisphere, they know that's a lie. America knows it too. But us. Uh, everybody know. Everybody know it but us. Right. Everybody know it but us. They know we, it too. we think the Jews white. Mm -hmm. See? They know it we think Jesus white. <laughs> we think you're going to have to be white in order to be saved. <laughs> that's why we're trying to live like white folks. <laughs> well, we are. We are. The white man designed our car. He designed our clothes. He tells us what kind of food to eat. Tell us what type program to watch on. They want us to watch on TV and what they want to teach in our schools. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, uh, brother. You start to say something. Um, so this th this vengeance that's going to take place of Yahweh, um, it says the year of his recompense. So this is it's going to be a lot of calamity that's going to take place. Of course, my brother. During in a, in one in a year span. Brother, in a year span, it's going to be so many things jump off, it's really going to be pathetic. Brother, we're going to read so it. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to be one thing. It's not going to be just one. It's One day is going to cause a lot of problems, but throughout a whole year, it's going to be a lot of problems. In the first seven months of our year, brother, that's when everything's going to jump off. Right. In the first seven months of our year, when things start to jump off, it's going to be in the first seven months. You ain't going to be able to put this in love. This is why Yahweh told us to be in holy convention on those holy days. See, if you out of convention on those holy days, you like them virgins that didn't take no extra oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Right, go I ahead, think it's like three, three to five months. Man was going to seek death and can't find it. Five months. Five months. In other words, brother fall off a building and get all bust up, he still be all bust up. Won't he? <laughs> he won't be able to die. Do like them robot men. They fall and they, they twist and do that and they back on the Back line. up. Get, get right back up. Now, y'all, don't you know that's going to be a grievous thing upon man, brother? But that, something like that can only come from your creator. Go ahead and let's finish this up, Steve. Uh, yes, sir. Verse 34. He says, 34, verse 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day the smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation it shall lie waste none shall pass through it forever he's talking, about, he's talking about Esau's land now the Negev the south land that's up on the, uh, up on the Israel that's where the lake of fire is going to be kindled at right in his land he ain't going to need no land he's going to be destroyed what are you going to need land for go ahead brother verse 11 but the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there. And all her princes shall be nothing. Hmm. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be
shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay in hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, mm -hmm. every one with her mate. Seek you out of the book of Yahweh and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it have commanded, and his spirit it have gathered. Amen. And he have cast the lot for them, and his hand have divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever, from generation to generation, shall they dwell therein. Okay, my brother. Uh, uh, we are, the reason for this is because of who we are. We are the children of Yahweh. Amen. Our purpose is aiding Yahshua in preparing mankind's future. This is why from the time of our father's deportation from our home, uh, homeland uh, of Israel, or the fertile crescent known also as the Garden of Eden, Yahweh made sure that his holy works upon earth would be preserved. Why? To be a witness against mankind for his sin and for a light to Israel, his chosen, for his chosen to give these things to mankind. This is why Satan is making war against us through his children. Ham, the African who had our fathers in captivity twice, Shem, uh, the Middle Eastern son, or the Arabs uh, uh, of old ancient Babylon, and Yafet, the Europeans, or uh, Romans, uh, 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 and Ishmael of Abraham, along with Moab and Ammon, uh, the so-called Palestinian sons of Lot, and Esau, of, uh, uh, they came out of Esau, our grandfather. But biblical and secular history cry, yes, even bewail their atrocities against Yahweh, his holy sanctuary of Mount Zion, and his chosen people of Israel. These were either colonized throughout the Middle East during, uh, uh, in Europe rather, and Asia in 721 B.C. by Shalmaneser, or whom the Romans sold from the house of Judah as slaves to the Ethiopians. The same house of Judah whom the Africans and Arabs sold to these transplanted Europeans Christian who murdered the Indians and took their land just like they took our motherland of Israel. Our present location, condition, and circumstances clearly prove uh, through biblical and secular history that we, the renamed Negro held captive in America, are the Jews of antiquity. And, because, and it's because of us, the house of Israel, it's because of us that all the power of the nations shall be destroyed. Amen. Because the nations have been deceived to leave the, the lead, to lead the elect lady that our fathers, the apostles, committed to their charge. And their religious traditions and customs from, from the 12 days of Christmas through the first day of their new year clearly prove that they are pagan. Mm -hmm. They hide it not, and they shout it up to high heaven. But let us put this fragmented minute beast on the scene and uh, 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 its healing, its wickedness, and its destruction in the future. Revelation 1, and pick this up at verse 1, my brother. Revelation 1 and verse 1. Revelation 1 and verse what now? Revelation 1 and verse 1. Oh, okay. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. People read Revelation and say, man, that book is scary. You know, I don't understand that book. Revelate means to reveal. If you had the spirit, you would have no problem understanding Revelation. See, Daniel was told to seal up the book until the time of the end, right? Well, we're going to open these books up. Amen. See. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. We may not get them all open today, but between now and the first of the month, we're going to have them all open and have the whole earth at peace. I don't know how long it's going to gonna take uh, the, uh, uh, to do our deliverance. It usually take two classes, but I don't think so. Uh, Revelations uh, chapter uh, 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach, which Elohim gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant Yohanan, who bore record of the word of Elohim and of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach and of all things that he saw. Bless 
blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Mm -hmm. Johanan, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Yahshua Hamashiach, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and have made us kings and priests unto Elohim and Yahweh. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He made us kings. And it made us priests, right? Even when you get further in Revelation, the four and twenty elders say they're going to reign as kings and priests on the earth. And when you read uh, Isaiah, Isaiah, uh, the Yahweh told uh, 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 Isaiah, say, look, you shall be a kingdom of priests unto me, a holy nation. This is why Christ said it's written in your law that you're God. Amen. How can you a priest to be, be a priest of the Most High God and don't be a son of God? Go ahead and read it. Verse 7. You may not have no power yourself, but understand this here. The spirit's are subject unto you. Right. So if the spirit is subject unto you, then you got power to inhabit it. Mm. Of course, you got to be subject to the word of God. Yes, sir. Of course you have to be. That's why Paul said, let the word of God dwell, dwell richly within you. Amen. Uh, yeah, that's the law, Elder, but that's the nail to the cross. <laughs> right. That's where they all gonna be nailed, <laughs> right to the cross. <laughs> Just watch. We gonna read. We gonna read. We gonna take them to the killing floor. Yeah, go ahead and read, brother. Verse seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, Amen. I am the beginning and the ending. The beginning and the ending says. The Adonai, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, Johanan, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Yahshua Hamashiach, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of Elohim and for the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. Now, if Nero had killed Paul, he killed Peter, he had exiled John and Revelators to the isle of Patmos, right? And John was there, what, what for? For the word of God. Go ahead and uh, do our class, brother. Verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Adonai's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the first and the last, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now where are any of these churches at today? Not exactly. Go ahead, brother. Verse See, where? what that shows is this. Show righteous to the, righteousness to the wicked. They will not run, learn righteousness. Go ahead, brother. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and then turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the pouch with a golden girdle. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, we see the Messiah, he was dressed with a girdle, that went, uh, uh, a garment that went down to his feet, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's up with this thing our brothers don't like to cover their loins? Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. <coughs> and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. And his head and his hairs was white like wool, right? Amen. And his feet was like unto fine brass that had been burned in a furnace, right? Amen. We noticed it could have been no white boy, don't we? Right. 
Go ahead, bro. Verse 19. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. Okay, now if you go ahead and read the rest of that, what you're going to find out that he had, he had something against all of those churches except one, mm -hmm. the Church of Philadelphia. The Church of Philadelphia was in revision at that time. See, people like to say, well, each one of these churches is a, this is what they get from white folks, though. Mm -hmm. Each one of these churches is a period of time that came up on the earth. No, it wasn't. These churches were set up back in those days, and they fell before Rome fell in 476 A.D. Go ahead and read, brother. The Romans stamped that mess out. Caesar was God. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Revelations uh, chapter 2, verse 1. No, uh, I'm sorry, brother. Go into chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. He was on earth. Then the Spirit told him, say, You come up here. I'm going to show you things that's going to happen later on. So now, uh, in the Spirit, he's in heaven. He's seen a vision in heaven, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 2. It's a dark brown stone. And the sardine stone is a sardine stone. It's just a little lighter than uh, 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 than is that jasper stone. Mm -hmm. go, ahead and read, uh, go ahead and read, my brother. As a matter of fact, I had one for a while. I don't know whether some nigga stole it or not. Sure, yeah, I'm not supposed to do it my stuff. I'm supposed to go ahead and get my stuff and say, I need this here. Like, I don't need it. Okay, I'll, yeah, here it is. Huh? The jasper, yeah. That's a jasper stone right there on the bottom of this page here. That's a jasper stone. That's a Jasper stone. And this is uh and this stone here, this is a sardine stone. See. Okay. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse four. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Mm -hmm. Four and twenty elders, right? You mean to tell me all the people that had died between uh, the, 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 the death of the Messiah in 96 A.D., only 24 people huh, was in heaven? And all of them supposed to be under the blood of the Messiah? Something up with that, ain't it? Go ahead, brother. And these were elders now. These weren't just folks that had just been resurrected. These were elders that was in heaven. Go ahead and read, brother. So let's go back and look at that. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we know was elders, don't we? Elijah went to heaven on a fiery chariot, didn't he? Uh, 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 Enoch was translated, no, wasn't it? So we know that there's a part, part of it, right? Plus, we got to consider another great personage in the Bible, Melchizedek. Okay, okay, okay. So we know who most of these people are here. Age and wisdom. That's what constitutes uh, being an elder. You don't have no, I look in there in, in the Mormon church. They got 16-year-old brothers walking around talking about this is elder so-and-so because they consider it an office, right? But the elders must be grave, well-seasoned, right? And ain't no young folks like that. Right. Young folks ain't got, they ain't got the snot out their nose yet. <coughs> they haven't found out, they haven't found which, uh, which way they're walking, whether they're walking forward or backwards or sideways yet. And because you know, the least little thing come up in, in, in life, all Satan got to say is say, check this out. And they run like an ox to the slaw. Yeah, go ahead now. Uh, uh, uh. And, 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 and I can say of these things because I was in my youth one time too. And I know how I did things. I said, I know the Lord said this, but this is what I'm going to do. Right. Right. You bust my brains out for it too. Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, 
full of eyes before and behind. Now, this uh, sea of glass that's like into a crystal, we're going to find out uh, 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 after, the, after the first resurrection that people are going to be seen standing on this sea of glass. Yes. Why? This earth here will have become the lake of fire, and the new heavens and new earth would be uh, 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 created, and they're on that sea of glass going where? To the new earth. Because this earth here is going to be the pit for the wicked. See, Yahweh created this earth to be inhabited, and believe me, forever and ever it will be inhabited. Yeah. Won't be known. Yeah, man, we'll get to that too. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. And the first beast. Hold on. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Mm -hmm. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Adam Elohim Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Adonai, to receive glory and honor and power. For you have created all things, and for your pleasure they are and were created. Amen. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Told Daniel, said, seal up the book, didn't he? Okay, this is one of those books that was sealed. Go ahead, yeah. brother. Verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders says unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Amen. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim sent forth into all the earth. Mm -hmm. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For you were slain, and have redeemed us to Elohim by your tongue, by your blood, I'm sorry, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and have made us unto our Elohim kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We're going to reign on the earth. Amen. Now the Christians say, now these folks are already in heaven. Yeah. Already in heaven. And they say they're going to reign on the earth, right? The Christians say they're going to reign in heaven. Something wrong with that. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. Verse 11. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast, and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature okay, which... Okay, uh, chapter 6 and 1, bro. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts said, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. This was the Roman Catholic Church that went forth conquering and to conquer after Rome fell in 476 A.D. Now go ahead and read, brother. Verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. 
And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat down to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and that was given unto him a great sword. This was when the Arabs made their sweep of the Middle East in the 13th uh, 13th century under the banner of Islam, spreading that garbage all over uh, Europe and the Middle East and the Far East. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see, ye hurt not the all and the wine. This was the European, uh, the EC, the European community, when they came up on the scene and, tra- and started reforming themselves. So go ahead and read, brother. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. Behold the pale horse, right? The pale horse rider is who? The pale horse rider is what? This this false prophet that would rise up that's going to cause everybody to worship that first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Go ahead, brother. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Okay, my brother, chapter 13 and verse 1 through verse 11. Let's go and pick this up and see what this actually is here. Chapter 13 and verse 11. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. Mm Mm-hmm. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. I'm sorry, 13 and 1, brother. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, 13 and 1. 1 through 11. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head... The name of blasphemy. Seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns, right? Mm-hmm. And there's the little horn over there, uh, 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 who is the man with the triple sixes who came out of ecclesiastical uh, 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 Babylon, right? Mm-hmm. Now, he had seven heads and ten horns and, 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 and ten crowns, right? And upon his head, the name of blasphemy, right? Okay, so we're going to go and read about that, too. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. Now, when it says in the beast, in verse 2, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, uh, pertaining to the swiftness in which Alexander the Great conquered all conquered the world. It was thir- uh, 12 years, right? And his feet were at the feet of a bear. That was the second uh, empire when the Medo-Persian Empire came in, right? And his mouth, the mouth of a lion. That was ne- part of Nebuchadnezzar's empire, right? And Satan gave him what? His power and his seat and great authority. Ain't that who running the earth today? Right. Okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Rome fell in 476 A.D., and that head received that wound, right? And now this deadly wound is coming back together being healed, right? And all the world wondered after this beast. Man, look at the power of this beast. Who's made, able to make war with him? Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So this empire does worship who? The dragon. So we can see it. We know it. But you know what? We want to be just like him. Right. In every way. I know it. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 5. And that was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Now, a lot of people say, well, see, we got three and a half years of the beast, and we got three and a half years of the false prophet. The false prophet is going to crown the beast, ain't he? 
So the false prophet and the beast is going to be reigning at the same time. Say, uh, the beast won't take over until after the three and a half years, after they've done what? After he co and Daniel told you, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he's going to cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. That's when he's going to get in there and say, I'm God. That's my son now, but I'm God. And he's going to do great wonders. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 7. And it was given out to him to make war with the saints. To make war with the saints. During the great tribulation period, he's going to make war with the saints and overcome them, right? Go ahead, brother. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Mm -hmm. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Now this beast coming up out of the earth here, yeah, now, now we're talking about, first we was dealing with what? Political Babylon, right? Now we're dealing with uh, Ecclesiastical Babylon. Uh, uh, this beast here came up out of the earth. The other beast came up out of the sea of men, right? Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Only priests do that, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceive of them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Yahweh said, don't make no images to bow down and worship them, right? Amen. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. We watched them Frankenstein movies when we was kids, right? Don't you know that they're on the verge of already putting a live man out there in the street if they haven't already did? What you think they're getting off into these genetics and so forth and so on for, huh? Just to be doing something? You get a flower and you plant it in the garden, it's pink, right? Because of the soil conditioning, you look, the next year's orange. The next year's yellow. The next year's white. Why? Because they've engineered the genes of it and it's going back to its original form. Go ahead and read it, brother. Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. In other words, somebody come up to you, and you and some brothers together, and a guy come up to you and put a gun to one guy's head and blow his brains out and say, now, nah, you going to worship that beast? What you going to do? Huh? You going to save your life, ain't you? You going to bow down and worship that beast, and the Lord going to kill you because you're afraid of your life, not understanding what death is. Death is a new beginning. It's the ending of the old and the beginning of the new. And if you aren't prepared for death, ain't no sense you messing with this. Because you're going to have to die one day. All, all, all that live is going to have to die. It's going to be in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, but you're going to have to die. Go ahead and read. Verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Do you know a bank account could be the number of his name? Right. A bank account could be the number of a beast? Do you know that? He controlled it, don't you? Don't he? Okay. It's including. I'm, I'm saying right here in uh, verse 16. Mm -hmm. So the type of uh, state that things will be in will be uh, like a military, uh, almost like a dictatorship. Because That's what it's going to be—a dictatorship. Saying, you know, both small and great. So it doesn't make a difference how much power you got, how wealthy you are. You're going to pay homage to the beast. In life, yeah, it don't make no difference whether you're rich or poor, because they're going to have a real serious army that's going to be opposed to all people. Of course. And it's going to be controlled by uh, the, the ecclesiastical power. If you don't worship that beast, you're going to be killed. 
That's why Israel over all over the world is going to have to get out those cities, brother. And that's why they're going the scriptures say they're going to be looking for them in the, in the holes and the rocks and the mountains that's and so forth. So we're going to have to get out of those cities because there's a lot of people ain't going to take that name, number, and mark. Whether well, you can't be around the people to do, and they're going to be hunting for you. So, Elder, have you heard? Um, you know, we did a, on Z103, I think, a couple of weeks ago. That uh, churches, uh, no, oh no, the Lord is doing it. They're doing the, um, you know, the, um, the the militia. They're supposed to just go off and start killing uh, people of color. Now they publicize this on the radio, and the FBI when? agent called in and verified. When? They did so about two weeks ago. Nigga, they've been doing that for the longest. Yeah. Ain't nothing strange. They saying they just made a really, really organized. They really, really organized a long time ago. Had niggas hanging out of trees, everything, man. It ain't nothing new. They've been saying that for the longest. But they saying they're going to make it very blatant. Man, let me tell you something. If they do, it ain't designed to do nothing but stir niggas up to make niggas go by them, them little our heads and all that junk and a handful of ammunition so they can get us all killed. Right. Because, see, they saying that Ben Amin and uh, uh, this, uh, this other uh, uh, dude they got down there in, in, in wherever he at in jail, right. uh, they saying that these people here are planning a race, right? We're terrorists and all right. that thing. If they get to killing off niggas, niggas going to start a riot. Right. And that's just what them they Europeans all. want you to do. They all. They armed to the teeth, and they've been they've been training paramilitary groups for years on these farms all around here. Right. And crackers getting tired of us running them out of the state of Georgia. Yeah. They keep going further and further and further out. So I mean, here come the niggas. Here come the niggas. The property value going down, right? As soon as they move, we move, we move right in there with it. Them Europeans, man, I've seen Europeans go and spend a hundred thousand dollars for a house that ain't worth ten thousand dollars. Because they knew Israel wasn't going to spend that money, right? Jake moved right in next door. Right. <laughs> we coming, and we bringing them cushions with us. Right. See? So they trying to get rid of Jake, brother. This thing about they going to do this and they going to do that. Why, let me tell you something. Now, they say it's some of the Israelite groups that are not off into that, right? Let me tell you something, brother. When the white folks get mad, all niggas look alike. Right. Okay. Amen. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Michael Jordan, too. Amen. Okay. Amen. okay, okay. Your money ain't going to be able to hide you from this because Satan going to be after your life. Your money ain't going to mean nothing to him. Uh, uh, go ahead now. I heard that. I heard that mess, brother. I heard that mess. I said, well, whatever they do, that's what they're going to do. Now, how can America stand up and talk about the thing, the atrocities at Tiananmen Square, and then they run around killing off folks? See, but it's got to, I don't know what's going to spark off this thing that's going to cause rule against rule and violence in the land. Right. I'm in the dark just like that as far as anybody else, but when it makes itself manifest, then all of us can. Right. You know, this could be the tip that's going to break, this could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. I don't know. I don't know. I truly don't know, but I know one thing. It ain't time yet. So, you know, that's why they're talking about the turn of the century. Uh, a lot of people that are off into that are going to be out in these large groups and these gatherings and everything, just like it was in Centennial Park when they right, exploded that's those bombs. That's why it would behoove Israel to, to keep the Lord already told us not to join into those activities. So if we're found in the wrong place at the wrong time, we get what we deserve. And that's exactly right, brother. That's who they said they were going to target. They were going to target the brothers and sisters that were going to be out at their churches worshiping Satan during that period and going to be out and party worshiping Satan during that period. Those are the people they target. Well, brother, that's who they said they're going after. Seeing, in, seeing, in, seeing that the year 2000 starts the, da the age of Aquarius, the water bearer, one of the pagan gods, then you can very well see the whole lot of things going to take place. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, but whatever they say and whatever they got to deal with, that's what they say and that's what they ever they got to deal with. But believe one thing, whatever they make manifest, you better be in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, they're trying to, what it is, like what Chico see, says, I don't know. We can play them little games and everything that we playing, you know, well, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And right. I think this, and I think that. You better be in the spirit. Go ahead, Doc. Um, and I don't know if this has any kind of bearing on prophecy or anything, but I Chinese Museum. It's the Yen Dragon. 
Yeah, just a year to drag. Yeah. Right? They had the year to drag in 15 years ago. Every 15 years or so, they have the year to drag. That's why they dress up with them dragon heads. We run around. Every 15 years or so, they have the year to dragon. So I don't know which dragon they're talking about. They might be talking about Satan, and they may not. You see, I don't know who they're talking about, brother. I mean, them Chinese got some gods. I don't even know nothing about their gods, brother. <laughs> They the gods sit down with big fat bellies and everything, man. <laughs> little green gods and so forth and so on, you know. So, they uh, carry them with them too. Of course they do. Uh, and and stuff lined up so I don't know too much about the Asians, brother. I, I stay away from the Asian stuff. The Asian type of people, I don't understand what they say. And they eat a lot of junk. That I don't eat. They eat anything that got a wings on it except an airplane. And anything that got <laughs> legs on it except a table and chair. And we know that. We know that. So I kind of stay away from them Asians, brother, because them, As them Asians is nastier than these Europeans, brother. I mean, check some of their rituals, man. Here's a dude, here's a man got a son, and he marries a virgin, right? And guess who breaks Guess who breaks the virgin in? The father. Now, check that out. Yeah. So I don't know too much about them Asians. I leave them Asians alone. I see them and say, hing hong. I say, yeah, right on you. You too. Yeah. Let's go ahead and finish up. Yeah, go ahead. Somebody got a question? Yeah. You know, Elder, uh, according to that Bible, mm -hmm. clear about the 666, mm -hmm. getting people used to the Internet, you can't even be on the Internet unless you say www. Mm -hmm. So, that's like what they were saying, that's the 666, you know. You can't buy or sell on the Internet, open up the web page, and that's www. So, it all gets stuck into what the Elder is saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can go for that, too. I can kind of go for that, too, brother. Like it said, it's a number of a man. His number is 666. Now, if we receive the number of his name, that don't mean that you're going to receive the number 666. That's his number. Mine is our 2865869. No, it's 2864882.19. That's what it is. See, so uh, all of us already got the number, haven't we? Now, it all depends on where your money going when you get paid. Number. Mm -hmm. What about, uh, say, for instance, uh, ATM cards? It's got a number on it. That's what I'm saying. And that number ties into your bank account, which ties into your Social Security number, right. which ties into your, your phone number, which ties into your address number. Right. <laughs> Wait till they get it for one. Everything you got, your driver's license, your automobile registration, your credit, your bank account, everything you got, got that Social Security number on it, hasn't it? Okay. That full social security number is the forerunner of the number of the beast, bro. They don't even have to change them, do they? Right. You already got your number. They don't right. even have to change them. All they got to do is say, okay, from now on, we don't, you ain't no name no more. You're a number. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Go ahead, let's finish up, brother. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. And his number is 666, and his, and his title is Vicarious Bli B.I. Now, let's go to Revelation 17 and pick up. We picked up our, our political and ecclesiastical Babylon and some of their exploits in verse 13. Now, let's go in here and deal with this Roman Catholic Church here, this Christian church. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows, and talk with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many walls. Mm -hmm. Now, now, if you read over here in uh, 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 verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 15, it says, And he said unto me, The waters which you saw where the whore sit are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. In other words, she had her tentacles all over the earth, didn't she? Right. Ain't the Christians all over the earth? Right. It's the largest religion on the face of the earth, isn't it? And Christ himself said the broad way leads to destruction. Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. When a, when a, when an emperor is, is, uh, is elected, he goes to see the Pope to be crowned. Right. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, 
And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. He was she was sitting up on this na- up on this beast. She was riding this beast. That meant she was in control, right? right. And she was full of names of blasphemy, right? Baptist, Methodist, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness, you name it. Right? right? Okay, go ahead. Come on, man. 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 And she had seven heads, right. the, whole, the whole four kingdoms, right? right. And ten horns. Mm-hmm. The last ten kingdoms going to come up. Come up. And she's going to end up with ten clowns. Right. And those are the ten clowns. You can check them in your history books today. Go ahead and read. You know, brother, as long as I've been in, in the Word and I run into Christians, they don't really want to deal with what you're dealing with. But every time they got a question, they want to come at you about it. Sure. Because the thing they often to don't make any sense. Sure. That's they why they come and ask you. They always come at you on the job or wherever you're at. They want, oh, God, what so-and-so, what does that mean? Brother. But they're in opposition to what you believe. I know some br- strange, I know some brothers, man, that, 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 I mean, they needed me all time tonight about information, right? They're trying to put together, the preacher didn't let them do a class once a month, and they putting together something, so they get me to put the class together for them, right? <laughs> then they go and tell that to them people, and then people start talking to them and so forth, but you know how they hushed one of them brothers' mouth? They offered him a church that took care of all of that. Oh, yeah. That took care of that. He wanted to be, he walked around not talking about the right reverend. He got yeah. his own church now. Right. Took care of all that knowledge and understanding. He was, I told him, brother, you cannot uh, go into that strong man house and, and, and spoil his good unless you first bind that strong man. And it's the strong man that got you teaching once a month. You ain't got no power. Right. You ain't nothing but a voice, man. You better leave that dude alone before they throw you out of church. And then eventually, they didn't throw him out. They gave him another church. Now his mouth shut in. And guess what? Since they gave him a church, he ain't called me no more. Right. <laughs> Go ahead and read, bro. Revelation chapter 17. The same thing will happen to some of y'all. Right. Same thing will happen to some of y'all. Right. Brother's going to come, dude going to come up to you and say, where's that nigga that's been teaching y'all? Uh-huh. You know the first thing you're going to say? Here's his phone number. Here's his address. Right? Just leave me and my family alone. Right. I know. But see, when I made my covenant, I prepared for that. Right. This, this is first in my life. Everything else comes second. That this is first. And if any of you sitting out here that this can't be first, then you better might as well go home. Because y'all ain't going to take your mess. He ain't going to take your second best. He said, I'm married unto you, right? right. Well, the wife's supposed to be obedient to her husband anyway. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. He catch you in the act of adultery, you're going to have a big problem. But what did he say? He said, you look up on all the high mouth and see where you ain't been laying with. You done went to bed with everybody. Right. He said, but return unto me. And I turn and return unto you because I'm married to you. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Well, that's how the church fathers do. They, 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 they go for your so-called leader. And when you tell them the leader is the Holy Ghost, they ain't got nobody to fight against. Right. Nigga ain't going to tell them the leader is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas gonna say, what niggas going to say is what's on my driver's license. My leader's name is Yaakov Ben Israel. Right? Right. I know. I know. I look at I know all about it. And the only thing I'm going to say is, Father, forgive him. I mean, just, just in his weakness, you know. If I go with the high, go ahead and do what you got to do. Take me. Go ahead and read, but Then I don't have to go through all this other mess, standing up here trying to talk to niggas and niggas acting like they want to act. Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Hmm. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She got daughters in it, haven't she? Right. And they're the abominations of all the earth, right? Look and see who got all the power on the earth, ain't it the Christian? Right. What a dragon has gave him his power, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead, read, brother. Verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the bloods of the martyrs of Yahshua. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Hmm. And the angel said unto me, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, 
which have the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Mm -hmm. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet it is. Right, they're going to say, oh man, look at the power we got now. Boy, we're going to have peace on the earth. Ain't but one army up on the earth. Right. We're going to have peace all over the earth. Go ahead and read, Buck. Yes. On the back of the Vatican coin, mm -hmm. the back of the Vatican coin, uh, they have a woman holding a gold cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And a cross in the background. They got a woman out of Liberty Pool hold, holding a golden torch, ain't she? Right? Light of the world, right? I can understand that, Buck. I can, I can believe that. Go ahead and read, Buck. Verse 9. <coughs> and here is the mind which have wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, right? Go in there and look in your encyclopedia. Don't you see, see that wrong since it's on seven heads? Plus, the Roman Catholic Church devoured the seven churches that Paul had set up. And when they came out, they had... Uh, and and uh, 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 after, after, after when they came out of the Dark Ages, that, that one church came out singing like a whore, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And she didn't separate until the 1500s with Martin Luther. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 10. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. Now, there were seven kings. Octavian was the first king, Julius the second one, Augustus was the third one, Nero was the fourth one, Vespasian was the fifth one, and Titus was reigning then. Titus would be the king that was going to come that was going to continue a short space. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 11. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. Mm -hmm. And the ten horns which you saw, ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is out of the of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So those ten kings, what are they going to do? Now, y'all can watch for this. It's not going to be just a man in each one of those countries that's going to be, that's going to have his voice. What it is, is court systems they're sitting up. Judicial system that's going to be ran by those ten countries right there. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 15. And he says unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. In other words, they're going to get rid of that Christian thing, ain't they? They're going to get rid of that Christian thing, and the, and the best way to do that is to do what? Destroy St. Peter's Basilica. Now they got the, they don't need that. Now they got the Messiah. They're beating their altars in the chalk stone. Now they got the Messiah sitting on the scene, their Messiah, right, in Jerusalem. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 17. For Elohim have put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give that kingdom unto the beast until the words of Elohim shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hall of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Mm -hmm. So they destroyed her, right? She fell, right? Go ahead, brother. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth all wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. And that's something. Even in all of this, during this ending of time here, you always going to have to say, Come out of her, my people. Because folks still going to be caught up into what the status quo is. Right. You know how Jake do. Jake want to be, Jake want to rub shoulders with who got the money. Right. Okay, go ahead and read. 
Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Elohim have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she have filled, fill to her double. How much she have glorified herself and lived delicious, deliciously. <laughs> so much torment the Father will give her. But she says in her heart, I said a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her pledge come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is Adonai Elohim who judges her. Okay, my brother, I don't want to go no further than that. Now let's go into it. Now we've set, we set the political and ecclesiastical uh, uh, Babylon on the scene with what's been going on with them trying to make everybody worship one man, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go to Revelation 6 and pick that up at verse 9. Revelation 6 and verse 9 uh, 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 through verse 11. <coughs> Revelation 6 and verse 9 through verse 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, how long, O Adonai, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So when the fifth seal was opened, we heard what? We heard people are pleading with God to avenge their death and avenge their people with the people that dwell on earth, right? You avenge us, right? It was no, was no action or nothing took place. He said, just wait until your fellow servants and your brethren should be killed as you are should be fulfilled. So now we're going into what? The great tribulation period. Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great Hold earth. Up. Did you finish verse 11? You stopped at verse 11, right? Yeah, okay, so. st okay, stop at verse 11. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, in, uh, chapter 11 and verse 1 through verse 6. Let's pick up some more things that's going to be going on at that time. We always going to have many things going on. You're going to have to see this whole picture, and it's going to take a while for you to get it in your mind, but you're going to have to see this whole picture so you know what's going on when certain things, uh, when you see certain things happen upon the earth. Uh, uh, chapter 6, uh, chapter 11, I'm sorry, and verse 1 through verse 6. Got a question there. Yeah. Before, yeah. No, she won't be destroyed. She's going to have trouble at the tribulation. She won't be destroyed till after the great tribulation period. She won't be destroyed till after the seventh seal is open. Go and read. By the time she destroyed. We have been in the wilderness 40 days before her destruction. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read that. Chapter 11, and pick that up at uh, verse 1. And that was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of Elohim, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Europeans, and the holy city shall be tread on the foot three and one half years. Same same period of time as the great tribulation, three and one half years. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in fact. Three and a half years. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the earth. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you, say, well, this is uh, Enoch and Elijah mm -hmm. because they went to heaven, uh, whole soul and body, and they're going to have to die. So this is them, not so. Why should, you know how long ago it was Enoch lived? Right. And he's still walking around in heaven and then he's going to die? Right. That don't make no sense. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devise their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Mm -hmm. These have power to shut heaven 
that it rained not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Okay, my brother. So now we got the beast up on the scene in Jerusalem, treading the holy city on, 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 of Zion underfoot, right? And we got two witnesses in Jerusalem that's prophesying against this beast, right? right. Okay, now let's go into chapter 6 and pick it up at verse 12 through verse 17. Chapter 6 and verse 12 through verse 17. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. Now, remember when the, the apostles was, was asking the, uh, the, uh, the, the Messiah what would be the sign of his coming? Yeah. And he told them, as lightning shine from the east and to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, darkness all over the land, and the heavens roll back, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's go see if, if the Son of Man come here. Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir, verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 12, and verse 1 through verse 17. The great day of his wrath is come, the heavens departed, and the great day of his wrath are... are, 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 are. Uh, uh, supersede you Israel because you represented in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. The things that were set up on earth were set up in heaven. This is why Moses was told and Solomon was told see that you build that, uh, this thing here exactly as you were shown in the mount. You can't get rid of Israel. Go ahead and read. Brother. That's in prison right, white folks think they're going to get rid of us. See? But, right, brother, we're stopping out number them in a minute, won't we? But see, uh, 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 the nations are going to try to get rid of Israel, but they can't. You know why? Yahweh's word has to be kept. And like, like uh, 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 Isaiah said, except Yahweh had left us a very small remnant, we'd be likened to Sodom and made, been made likened to Gomorrah. And when you look at maybe 10, 15 million of us being saved out of this, that's a very small remnant of our people. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 12, verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And seven heads, ten horns, and it had seven crowns upon his head, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because remember, three of those horns was plucked up by the root one. Right. Okay, go ahead. Verse 4. <coughs> And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And those angels are bound in the great river Euphrates. Go ahead and read, brother. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto Elohim and to his throne. Okay. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of Elohim that they should feed her there three and one half years. Three and a half years. The great tribulation period, right? Mm -hmm. Judah's going to go to the wilderness. Then Paul said he's going to be saved from wrath. Mm -hmm. Even the wrath of Satan you're going to be saved from. Yeah, that's why his brother uh, uh, ordered long pilgrimage last night. Mm -hmm. And he stopped at where you said where it says uh, in 
and to Sarah, be born, be stopped there and just emphasize and went through all his, you know, his gyrations and all, and his history was born. Crazy. Because he wasn't talking about this stuff. Obviously, he's talking about women and their children and so forth. Mm. He electrified the crowd. I mean, it was unbelievable. Smooth thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Ain't nothing to put nobody, nothing on nobody's mind. Something to make your feet walk out of there feeling good with. When you walk out that door, I want you to feel the bad. Yeah. I want you to go get out on your knees, bad enough to go get out on your knees and pray about something. Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, that's why I'm, uh, most of my classes are geared to exhortation. If you want happiness, go to Six Flags. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and read that. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Mikael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast That's out. That's why heaven opened. Lightning shined from the east to the west, didn't it? Because Satan was cast, Satan and his angels was cast out of heaven into the earth. Go ahead and read, brother. But see, that casting out to the earth is going to make the people believe that the Messiah is here. Mm -hmm. That's why they're going to flee to worship this man. And that's why the Israeli is going to go ahead and do what? Sacrifice to him. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Messiah. So the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives until the Amen. death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Hold on, hold on. Read that verse for me. I'm going to turn it verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Mm -hmm. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for three and one half years from the face of the That's when Judah breaks camp. Right then. That's when Judah breaks camp. That's when Judah goes to the wilderness. When uh, 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 when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, when the sixth seal was opened, that's when Judah getting up out of here because nothing is there but the seventh seal, and the seventh seal only announces the wrath of God. When read that. Esau believe anything, anything you give him enough money to believe. <laughs> Read the Zionist Manifesto. E anytime any empire came into the land, Esau was one of them. <laughs> Esau was one of them, brother. The, the, the Yahweh told him to say, uh, uh, when the enemy came into your brother's land, say you was one of them. You even helped them, didn't you? Right. Didn't you? How do you think Herod the Great got to be a king of Judea? It was against the law for anybody to say that they was king but Caesar. And here's now Dumian talking about he a king because of what he controlled. The gateway to the Middle East. The gateway to the world, I should say. You said this right there, see how evil he is now. He, he waited for his Messiah to come, right? And my I thought they said Menachem Cheerson was the Messiah. About, uh, about two years ago, said he died, and I still wait for him to be resurrected. You know, my mother went to Israel last year. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to show you what Jesus, where he, where he died. In. You want to show you what Jesus played in. See Jesus' cousin in. <laughs> All his anti-terrorism was. Oh, I know. Jesus preached now. Of course, preach. of course not, brother. Of course not, brother. See, it's all geared up about money. That's what that's right. what the whole world is about, brother. Money. The whole world is about money. If you don't think so, you get married and lose your job. Uh, Go ahead, you finished up. <laughs> you finished this is true? Oh no, sir. No, I haven't finished. You haven't finished. Verse. Nigga say, I love you, but you need some money. 
It takes money to run this house. I can't spend that love. It takes money to pay these bills. It takes money to do this. It takes money to do that. And I need, we need some money. Church. Church. If you ain't got no money, your honey might turn into something else. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Wait, wait, I'm way off. Wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, verse 15, I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Right, trying to get us on the high seas, ain't it? See, trying to destroy us before we get to the, to the secret place. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 17. And the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed who keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Yahshua upon the seal. See, he's not making war with other, other people. The, the dragon is angry with Israel and he's making war with us because we keep the commandments of Yahweh Elohim and we bear within our flesh the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Uh, chapter 7 and verse 1 through verse 17, my brother. Chapter 7 and verse 1 through verse 17 now. Now, the sixth year was open. Satan was thrown out of heaven to the earth and pick this up at verse 7. Uh, and uh, he went to make war with the remnant of the woman's seed to brought forth the man child, right? Now pick this up at chapter 7 and verse 1 and let's see what's going to take place. Yes, sir. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. This army is going to be divided up into quarters. And what's happening? These angels are holding these, these, these uh, uh, armies back, but they don't do anything. So wait a minute. Ain't time for you to do something. We got things we got to do first. We got to take care of Yahweh's business. So y'all just be still for a minute. Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living Elohim. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our Elohim in their foreheads. Seal who? Seal who? The servants of our Elohim. And said, Don't you hurt anything till we seal these servants in their forehead. Now, everybody talking about they're serving God, right? White folks, black folks, yellow folks, orange folks, green folks, you name it. Everybody talking about they're serving God, right? Read. Yes, sir. Verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. It didn't say of all the nations, did it? Did it? It said that the servants came what? Out of the house of the children of Israel, did it? And it goes on to name all of those tribes by name. Now, so it's, it's some fluctuations here because uh, Manasseh was mentioned, and Manasseh shouldn't have been mentioned. Joseph should have been mentioned. And they got Joseph down in the, in the eighth chapter, so it was a mistake made in copying this. But we know that Manasseh and Ephraim had the stick of Joseph. Okay. They say, well, Dan is uh, not mentioned, so what happened was, and because this mistake is made, that means that the, the nation was slid up in there once. Ezekiel, he had something to say about Dan's portion. Of course he did. So Dan is going to leap from the shrine, and Dan is going to receive his portion then. So Israel, seeing that Israel, Paul told you, Israel, in Romans 9th chapter, Israel was given the covenants, the promise, the service, the giving of the law, all of the holy things was given to who? The children of Israel to do. The children of Israel wrote the book, right? Okay. And when, when, when their father, y'all told me, uh, I think in the last part of the Genesis, he was uh, telling what's going to happen to him in the latter days, and they're blessing. He named all the tribes anyway. Of course he did. He was inspired by, uh, the, uh, he was inspired by the Creator to tell them what was going to happen, right? Of course, brother. So they got that anyway. Of course. Skip down to verse 9. He names all the tribes. Now skip down to verse 9. Now pick that up at verse 9. Sure. Sure. All the nations are, are not of the tribes of the children of Israel. When it's when it says of the tribe of the children of Israel, you know, didn't nobody get no double portion out of this. Because the firstborn son did what? He lost his inheritance when he went to bed with his dad with, with his mama's uh, with his dad's concubine. Okay. Go ahead and read that. 
Yes, sir. Verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, mm -hmm. and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our Elohim, which sitteth upon the throne, and to the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped Yahweh, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, Who are these which are dressed in white robes, and from where did they come? And I said unto him, Sir, you know. I, you know. I don't know. What you asking me for? You one of the elders. You know where all these people in these white robes. He knew about Israel now. But he said, Now where are all these folks there coming from? He said, You know. Let's see what he told him. And he said to me, <coughs> These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of Elohim, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Amen. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Future tense, shall feed them. He shall do these things mm -hmm. to them during the millennia period. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. And shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And Elohim shall wipe away all tears from your he eyes. He shall do this thing during the millennium, as I, as I said. So far, political and ecclesiastical Babylon is in place. The Pope calls us all to worship the last king as the Messiah. And uh, in the process, Satan is thrown out of heaven and began to make open war on us. Why? Because we are the children of the wife who brought forth the man child who would rule all nations. So by us knowing the truth, by keeping the commandments of Yahweh Israel, and because we possess the testimony of Yahshua uh, Hamashiach I Elohim, we bear witness against the paganism of Satan's cursed children. This is why the 144,000 had to be sealed from the wrath of the Almighty El. But first, preparations had to be made for some other things to take place. Zechariah 2 and verse 6 through the It's a tribulation, and it's a great tribulation. But what people is uh, talking about, but what people are referring to, rather, as the, uh, a, as, the a, as the great tribulation, brother, they they trying to put two tribulation periods, three and a half year period. It's not so. Because one of those periods, if you check in the book of Daniel, one of those periods will not last three and a half years. Remember what Christ said: "Except those days be shortened, no flesh will." The first three and a half years took place during the opening of the fifth seal. We can see that on the, we can see that coming in place now. The second will take place uh, once Satan is thrown out of heaven. That's when the tribulation. When Satan comes to make war with you, you in tribulation. Yeah. 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 When you talk about when Satan is thrown out in Revelation twelve, mm -hmm. can you explain um because um between like the Messiah said, you know, I'm leaving and you know, he's telling me to have nothing to do with me. That was then. Yeah. Can you explain how, I mean, how is that, is he here now or what? Satan? Yeah. Sure he's here. Yeah. Satan just have access to heaven. Yeah. Satan is an angel. He keeps the laws of God just like we do. Job told you there came a time when the sons of God came to appear before him and Satan came also. Right. And he said, from where come he, whence cometh you, Satan? He said, from going to and fro into the earth and walking up and down in it, right? Yeah. The Messiah said, the prince of this world comes. He was coming where he was. He was already on the earth. He said, the prince of this world comes, and he has no part in me, right? Satan even told him, said, look, if you fall down and worship me, I give you all this stuff because this is delivered unto me, and I give to who I will. So this was Satan's dominion. He was supposed to bring forth the fruit thereof, but he wouldn't do it. He said he would, and he came here, and he destroyed Adam and Eve and all of mankind. So when, uh, when the Messiah was talking about when Satan gets thrown out of heaven, it has to be around one of our holy days that he gets thrown out of Satan. Because Revelation, show you where he lived at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so he's right here on the earth. He just have access to heaven. Uh, uh, he just have access to heaven. He is in Revelation uh, 
In other words, after you get thrown out, you don't have no more access. Of course not. No, he be too vigilant, brother. You know, a lot of times, uh, but when you look amongst the congregation, you see people with a lot of wrinkles in their head, uh, trying to discern what the Spirit is giving you. But a lot of times, it's not for us to know everything. That's why we have an elder. The things that we need to concentrate on is being obedient and following the dictates of the church as we as you guide us to spread this information. You might have wrinkles in your face. Keep sitting in the chair. Amen. And all those wrinkles smooth out pretty soon. Then you can get wrinkles in your face, not by script, but by something somebody is doing that you don't that you don't like. <laughs> so it don't make no difference here. Niggas will have wrinkles in the face about one thing or another. Let's go and see about uh let's go and see where right. Satan dwells at here on this earth, uh Revelations two and pick it up to verse twelve. Yes, sir. Yeah, because right? yeah, we're coming back to Zachariah six. Don't I'm trying to get up to a place to where I cut this class off at. Mm -hmm. so just go ahead and uh, read this here, my brother. Verse 12, Revelation chapter 2, verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things says he which have the sharp sword with two edges. Mm -hmm. I know your works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan is, right. and thou holdest fast my name and have not denied my faith, even in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelt. Satan, uh, 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 that's in uh, where, where it was? Bulgaria. In Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. See? Antipas was killed in Bulgaria, right? Well, yeah. that's where Satan's seat was at that time in Bulgaria. That's, so one, of the, that's one of the uh, strongholds for drugs on earth, isn't it? That's one of the strongholds for, dr for, for drugs on the earth. But look, over there, look over there in that area. It's right in that same area. World War One started and oh. World War Two wasn't. Right. Okay. In, in that area, in that in, in that area over there, a lot of the popes came from that area, brother. That's the reason for that. See, Satan dwells in that area. Oh, see, yeah. the scripture says, "Is this the man that made kingdoms to crumble?" Mm -hmm. So when Satan is thrown out of heaven the last time, then he would become a man, then right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and uh, okay, my brother, we don't have to we don't have to deal with that no more. I just want to show you where Satan dwells at on this earth. But who he dwells in is the kings of the earth. And whoever, whoever it is that uh, disobeys the laws of the true and living God. Zechariah 2, and pick that up at verse 6, my brother. Yes, sir. Zechariah 2, verse 6. Now, if I talk about some things that y'all don't understand, don't ask nobody about it but me. Right. Because somebody else might tell you what they think. And then you're going to have a controversy. Amen. Go ahead now. Verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, says Yahweh. For I have spread your broad as the four winds of the heaven, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Deliver yourself, O Yehuda, that dwelleth with the daughter of Europe. Don't we dwell, dwell in the daughter of Europe? Don't we dwell in the daughter of Babylon over here in America? Right. And what did he say? Deliver yourself. Right. Go ahead, brother. How do you deliver yourself? By doing the works that was here. Mm -hmm. I mean, ain't nobody going to just give you nothing because you think you're a good Joe, because you think you're smart. There's a right. job to be done. You better get on this train. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Right. Yes, sir. Verse 8. For thou says Yahweh of hope, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoil you. But he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. Mm -hmm. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And you shall know that Yahweh of hosts have sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Yehuda. For lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, says Yahweh. Okay, my brother. So we know that he told Judah, say, you deliver yourself. That dwells in the daughter of Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. Chapter 12, and read verse uh, 7, my brother. Okay. Just verse 7 out of chapter 12. Uh, I tell you what, go ahead and uh, pick this up at verse, uh, I wanted to read this later on, but I guess mm -hmm. I might as well go ahead and I'm going to cut into it now. Pick it up at verse, uh, verse 1. Yes, sir. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of Yahweh for Israel, says Yahweh, which stretches forth the heavens and left the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, 
I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Yehuda and against Jerusalem. That's what's going to make all the nations. Judah is the, re Judah is the reason that all the nations are going to come up to Jerusalem to do battle. See? When we come up out of the wilderness, we're going to go in there and take one, once them, them, them rebels purged out and that majestic army is formed, they're going to go in and take that city. And once they take that city, that's what's going to make all the nations come up to do war uh, against us, to kill us off. That's how they're going to be uh, uh, at war between Judah and Jerusalem, right? And when they come up there and invade that city, your brother going to say, uh-uh. That's going to be the end of that. And so when he said he make them a couple of trembling, in other words, they're going to be in fear from that point forward. Of course. Because after they go through that situation, they're not going to want to war with us. Right. Right. They know what's happening, man. Judah going to be kicking butt and taking names, man. Ain't no weapon formed against them going to prosper. Mm -hmm. That's why they're going to be fe fearing and trembling. They know you ain't going to be shooting nobody and they're going to be falling off the wall. That ain't going to happen. Right. Go ahead and read that. Verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against Not them. some of the people. All of the people of the earth gather against Jerusalem and Judah, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. So this is when he's going to take out nine-tenths of all of mankind, right? Yeah. Right at the doors of it, brother. Right. A few it's more things got to happen. A few out. more things got to happen, and he's going to rip them off. Nine-tenths of all the nations and, and two-thirds of us. Okay. Go ahead, bro. Verse 4. In that day, says Yahweh, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Yehuda, and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Yehuda shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in Yahweh of hosts, their Elohim. Let's get into the city. That's what they're going to be saying, right? Let's get into the city, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. In that day will I make the governors of Yehuda like an hurt of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheep. And they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Right. They got to secure that city. We gave it up, and they got to secure that city, right? And once we secure that city in safety and everything, that's when that's giving that the nation's time to do what? To come up there to do battle. We ain't even need to think about no battle. So don't worry about it. Lord, say, fear not. Lord, tell me. Lord, take care of that. You go on and marry and get in marry. Do, do what you got to do. Go ahead, bro. Verse 7. Yahweh also shall save the tents of Yehuda first, that the glory of the house of Dabin and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Yehuda. That goes in line with what Paul said. Glory and honor to the Jew first in Romans second chapter, right? Mm -hmm. Tribulation and anguish to the Jew first. Mm -hmm. Glory and honor to the Jew first, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that goes hand in hand with that then, doesn't it? Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. In that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as Dabin, and the house of Dabin shall be as Elohim, as the angel of Yahweh before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of Dabin and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Oh. Arab, I want to ask you a question about this, and I think I asked it before. <coughs> when you deal with those brothers under that old order that they don't believe in God's they believe that David is, is the Messiah, mm -hmm. how do they come back at that? They don't. David, David, he, he, he laid, he was the, only thing they the only thing they said was David was pierced, and it's going to be David. That's all. They ain't got no foundation. Brother. They don't try to fuss. They try to fuss with fools about this. But when you got some script, they can just say that's David and go on about your business. That's David. Like Zeru Bible. Right. The only thing he can say, that's David. That's David. That's David. That's David. That's the only thing he can say. I said, well, what about a virgin uh, mm -hmm. uh, conceiving and bringing forth seed? David's, uh, uh, mo uh, David's uh, 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 mother was not a virgin. Right. They don't deal with it. They just don't deal with it, brother. The scriptures say prove all things. They can't prove nothing. The only thing they can prove is that they Israel under the old order thing. Right. Go ahead and let's finish. Uh, chapter 13, and pick that up at verse 1. Yes, sir. 
In that day, there shall be a fountain open to the house of Dibes and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. Uh, verse 7 and uh, 2 verse 9. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, says Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little one. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, Yahweh is my Elohim. Judah has to be saved first. Growing out into the Jew first. I don't know what these folks talk about being raptured off. But what I'm reading is Judah going to be saved first, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, once America, once it becomes imminent that America is going to fall, Judah has to get out of here. And nobody is going to let 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 million of us in their country. So let's go to Ezekiel 20 and pick that up at verse 30. See what's going to take place. Ezekiel 20 and verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 20. Good grief, I know what that is. All right. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 30. I got a, I got a couple more pieces of scripture to read, and I'll be out of your hair for today. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 30. Verse 30. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Are you polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit you whoredoms after their abominations? For when you offer your gifts, when you make your sons to pass through the fire, you pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, says Adonai Elohim, I will not be inquired of by you. Right, because we talk, we talk about worshiping of idols and everything. You say, man, I know better than to worship an idol. Well, you being disobedient, what's the difference? What's the difference between Paul acquainted sin to idolatry, didn't he? Okay, ain't no difference. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir, verse 32. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that you say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the country to serve wood and stone. Right, we're going out here and buy us a Christmas tree this week. And going to deck it in gold and silver and set it up. Because Santa is making his list and checking it twice. And I want to be on his list. Right, go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir, all the way to the front. Mm-hmm. You know they got some over there in Dutch. Over there in uh, Holland, uh, somewhere over there where the Dutch people live, mm -hmm. they got Santa Claus and got the little elves, but they, they look like Negroes, though. Mm -hmm. And they're dark skin, they're having a big riff about it, too. Well, they had a big riff about this brother going to play uh, a black Jesus, didn't they? Right. Yeah, they don't want none of Santa stuff. Man, they don't want you around. They don't want nothing about you around. But I'm saying the Dutch people has had them being dark for, you know, for years. But the rest of the Christians are having problems with it. Yeah, right. It works. Okay. Because the Negroes found out about it and said, man, they got us looking like elves. Yeah, uh, they don't want niggas to, get to, uh, to celebrate Christmas. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 33. As I live, says Adonai Elohim, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm <coughs> and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Mm -hmm. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness in the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, says Adonai Elohim. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. <coughs> and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Amen. And you shall know that I am Yahweh. Amen. 
As for you, O house of Israel, thus says Adonai Elohim, Go you, serve you every one of his idols, and hereafter also, if you will not hearken unto me. But pollute you my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. Right, you ain't going to do what I say? Get on away from me. Just don't pollute my name. Just get on away from me. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Verse. And if you don't know what I said, you better ask somebody. Because <laughs> you're still going to be held accountable. Right. Go ahead, brother. Seven. Yes, sir. Verse 40. For in my holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, says Adonai Elohim, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. Mm -hmm. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. Mm -hmm. I will accept you with your sweet favor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. Praise God. And you shall know that I am Yahweh when I shall bring you into the land of Israel into the country for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall you remember your ways and all your doings when you have been defiled. And you shall love yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that you have committed. And you shall know that I am Yahweh when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O you house of Israel, says Adonai Elohim. Okay, my brother, I don't want to go no further than that. So they say you're going to bring us to the wilderness, right? Yeah. Okay, now let's go into Psalms chapter 40, Psalm, Psalm chapter 91. Psalm chapter 91. Now, once we get in the wilderness, he said he's going to purge out two-thirds of the people, right? Yeah. And they're going to, then the rest of the people, he's going to bring under the bonds of the covenant. But that two-thirds that they purge out is not going to enter into the land of Israel, right? Yeah, yeah. They're going to be killed off by either the beast or the false prophet. Yeah. See, Amen. you got to understand what's going to take place. It said that America, her storehouse is going to be open and she's going to be robbed. The same thing happened when we was in Egypt. And we're going to leave here with the wealth of, the co of this country, and we're going to get out there in the wilderness, and it's going to be a lot of folks messing. You see, that's what y'all being trained for, you see. It's going to be a lot of folks that ain't going to know what's going on, and there's going to be captains of fifties, captains of hundreds, and captains of thousands, just like it was when you came out of Egypt, right? And they're going to be instructing the people. There's still going to be that, that, that group in there that says, man, let's go on down into Egypt. We can go down and eat the melons and the cucumbers and the onions and live in the Conrad Hilton and, and go ahead and we can get in the jacuzzi and just have a big fun. We got all this wealth. Baby, let's go. That's what he wants you to do. Get on out of that wilderness, baby, so he can kill y'all. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Uh, where you at? Psalms chapter 91. Okay. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Once they leave out of the wilderness, now y'all know we can't stay there, don't you? Huh? Because them niggas gonna tell everybody in the world where you at. That's why you're gonna have to go to the secret place, and when people come to look for you, then you won't be there. And there's gonna be a covering over the whole defense. All them satellites and all that stuff will not be able to see through that angel that's gonna cover this thing. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2, I will say of Yahweh, here is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in him will I trust. Amen. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckle. His truth shall be your shield and buckle. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Uh, verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Praise God. Because you have made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. 
Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen and amen. Now, what we're going to do, we, we got to understand, now, uh, 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 once these things came up on uh, up on the earth, once this 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 commotion gets you going on with Europe putting itself together, um, America has to fall, and Judah has to fly into the wilderness from the face of the of the surface, uh, uh, from the wrath of the Almighty that's beginning to be poured upon the earth. Okay, let's go into Isaiah 18 and read verse 1 through verse 5 and see what this wrath is going to be poured on first. You say us chapter 18 and verse 1 through verse 5. And then what I'm going to do is next week when we come back in here, we're going to pick that up in, uh, 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 in, the, uh, in the wrath of, the, of Yahweh in Revelations 8 and Revelation 15 and verse 16. Uh, uh, Isaiah 18 and read verse 1 through verse 5. Yes, sir. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that send the ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the water, said, Go, you swift messengers, to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down, whose land the rivers have spoiled. Mm -hmm. All you inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see you when he lifts up an incense on the mountains, and when he bloweth the trumpet, hear you. That trumpet's going to be blown. Black folks used to sing, where shall I be when the first trumpet sounds? When that trumpet sounds, if you don't hear it, you're in big trouble. You in serious trouble. Mm. That incident ain't standing up on the mountain for nothing. Those incidents stand up on the mountains to deliver and to bring woe up on the earth. Mm. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 4. For so Yahweh said unto me, I will take my rest, and I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon earth, and like a cloud do in the heat of harvest. It destroys the harvest, don't you? Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. For, the harvest, For before the harvest of the world, go ahead, brother. When the bird is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the sprig with the pruning hook and take away and cut down the branch. We know that Europe is the vine of Christianity, and he's going to cut that vine down. Okay, uh, 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 chapter 35 and verse 1 through verse 8. Chapter 35 and verse 1 through verse 8. The, the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Hmm. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of Yahweh and the excellency of our Elohim. Strengthen you the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your Elohim will come with vengeance, even Elohim with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deep shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an hawk, and the tongue of the dumb, tongue of the dumb sing. But in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. In other words, the curses is going to be open once we get into the wilderness. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lake shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err. Then. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir, verse 9. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of Yahweh shall return and come to Zion with songs, 
and everlasting joy upon their head. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Amen and amen. Now, I'm going to give you all another couple of pieces of scripture to read. It's going to be uh, the destruction of America. Uh, uh, that was chapter 35. Uh, when you get some time, read uh, Isaiah 13 and verse 1 through verse 22. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 1 through verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 1 through chapter 51 and verse 58. As we see from what we've read, uh, 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 the daughter of Babylon is on the threshold of her destruction. Why? Because glory and honor is to the house of the Jews first, as America will not be a part of the beast that had the wound by the sword and did uh, live, and at this time is being healed. America is not going to give up her power to anyone, therefore she has to be destroyed. So as we see, brothers and sisters, Yahweh is all. He said, I'll do anything till I tell my service the prophet first. And he's laid down everything that, he, that he's going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then, you do what you're going to do. That's about all I'm going to do today. And I'll be back. May Yahweh have a merciful time.